Welcome back to BadDragonProductions.com. Lesson four, designing your template. All right, we've got our container put together. We've dropped our header in, put a banner in, got our menu bar for our little, uh, you know, the links, the navigation links, left and right margins, our body, <clears throat> and our footer. Now, we're going to tweak this a little bit from the last lesson. We uh, had our body and we gave it a width of 894. I'm going to cut that down. I don't know what I was thinking, 894. That's, that's from one end to the other because it's 900. We um, had the left and right margins at 150, right? Right margin, right 150, left margin 150. So that's 300 minus the 900 of the length of the container <clears throat> that'd be 600 and then we're going to take 6 out for all uh, the little pixel border lines so 600 that would make it 594 so let's go back to the body and change it from 894 to 594 And then we need to position it. Here's our body now. Let's uh, take this text out too. Just well, let's live view. Take this text out because it's confusing. Okay, here's our main. Now, because we turned off, it was full length. Now we made it shorter. We made it the width between the left and the right margins. We're going to have to... Um, bump it over so it squeezes up in between the two left and right margins. So, where's my body at? There it is. Nope, menu bar, main body. Okay, height auto, border. So we'll say margin auto. And it should pop up between the two. There we go. Ta -da. Magic, okay? Eh? So here's our main. This is where your text is going to go for your stories, etc. Bump a few uh, <clears throat> carriage returns in there to lengthen it. Now the footer, it looks like the footer's stuck, but it's really not. It's just has to has to re reposition itself. So now on the left and right margins, um, Let's drop in, um, well, we're going to put a navigation, we're going to put a navigation bar in here. So in our left margins, we can put in whatever. Uh, it would be your ad boxes, or if you had another list of links, you could have a, a link list here. You could have reference links here. You could put in... Uh, left and right margin like skyscraper ads or whatever in the menu bar is where we're going to have the um the navigation links you know home and samples about etc contact us we're going to put those here in the center so the first thing we need to do is make make the links so we're in the menu bar This footer thing is bugging me. Okay, the menu bar. Now, remember how we had to move the container div tag to the end, to the bottom, so we could put everything within the container? Well, we have to do the same thing now with the menu bar. Here's our menu bar. And now we're going to put stuff in it, so it has to go in this area between the div ID menu bar and between the div close, the closing div tag. So let's say um, we're going to put in a home. So we're going to, we're going to put a, we have to put a list in here. I'm trying to think of the easiest way to explain this. A list, if you have, let's say home samples and a contact us, that's a list. If we just wrote a regular list, they would come up one over the other. 
you know, like one, two, three, four, they'd be stacked. If you make an unordered list, they're going to have bullets on it. You know, when you, uh, you know, like an option eight gives you a, gives you a bullet. Um, the bullet. That's what an unordered list does. If we used an ordered list, <clears throat> it would give us one, two, three. So it would look like, you know, one, two, two, three, okay? If we, we're gonna go with an unordered list, but then we're gonna tell it to display none so it doesn't show our little, our little bullets, okay? So we put down a UL, Chevron, UL, Chevron, and then we put down an LI, and that's for list. The UL is unordered list, and then your list item, LI, I'm going to indent just a little bit, so it would be Chevron, LI, Chevron, we'll say home, closing, LI, and then we'll have list item, um, sample, samples, closing Chevron, uh, list item, Chevron. And just for the heck of it, just because we can, I know it's not in the actual template, but we're going to add one more. List item, close, we'll say uh, contact. Or let's go with about, because I'm not going to put together a contact form right now. We'll do that later. So we'll say about Chevron slash LI. Okay, and then we have to close this out now. This is an individual item within our menu bar segment, okay? So we have to close this out. Anything you, whenever you open with it, anything, it doesn't matter whether it's an unordered list or a div ID or a head or a body, it doesn't matter. You've got to have the closing tag. So now we're going to come down here. And put our closing UL tag. Okay. So now when we refresh that, see what I mean? Here's your here's your bullets. So we have to go into the style sheet now and tell this not to list up and down with bullets. And what we're going to tell it is to list in line and display none. And it'll take the bullets away and it'll straighten the words out. So let's go to our style sheet and we go into the menu bar. It doesn't have to be at the menu bar, but I usually try to keep these things all close, somewhat close to, to one another. So let's call them uh, uh, menu links, okay? So we have a dot menu link. Oops, I'm in the wrong get out of this curly brace here okay we're gonna have a dot menu link opening curly bracket closing curly bracket now what this dot signifies is a class remember the chevron or I mean the hashtag signified a division ID, a div ID. Well, now the dot signifies a class, a div class. And these items here are going to be within that class. So a div ID is a single, it's a single entity. It's a single segment. It's an individual part, okay, singularly within your form, whereas a class can be reused over and over and over and over. So let's say you had a, a dot, because um, we're going to do one later, you had a dot box and it puts a little box up here in the header so you can put your title. That dot box class can be used multiple times within this form. So you can have the box in the left margin, you could have the box in the main, you could have the box in the right margin, and they would, all of them, would take the characteristics that you give it in this class. 
So we're going to go dot menu link. And then every menu link that had this class would take on the, these characteristics. I know this sounds kind of confusing. But... So let's say uh, dot menu links. Um, <clears throat> we're going to build. We're going to build the um, the actual container for these links. Now I realize we already made a menu bar and that's going to contain these links. Yeah, it's going to contain these links, but the menu bar is actually going to contain the container that holds the links. So you say, why do we need two containers? It just makes it easier to position because then you can position each one of the links as a whole rather than um, having to individually slide them all around. So we're going to make these menu links. Um, menu links, let's give them um, a height of 40. Uh, we'll, yeah, 40, because our menu bar is 50. So height. We're going to align them in the center. So text align. Text align center. And then we'll give these a border too just for now, just so you can see them in, in true life. Um, we'll just go black with this one. Okay, semicolon. Now each one of these within this menu links, we'll save it and take a look at it. Oh, we haven't done the class yet. But, sorry. So within the menu bar, we have div class. Okay, div class, because we had the dot in the front, and here they are, the menu links. And I'll just write this word so you can see it, and then we're going to close our div class tag, okay? And when we refresh it, you'll see it. Here it is. This is the thing that's going to contain the links. You do not, and I repeat, you do not have to have this div class menu links. You can just go straight to the ULs and drop them individually within the menu bar. But with the, the benefit of the link is then you can, you can move this thing around. And then it, it's kind of like, uh, what's it called when you, uh, you group or ungroup things like in, in a certain forms or Photoshop or whatever, you've got a, a little item up here and another item in the corner. And if you link them or group them, you can just grab one of them and it makes all of them move around. That's kind of the idea here. You can just grab this menu links div class container and then you can move all your links around within that. Some people think it's easier. Some people think, think it's harder. It's extra work. I tend to think it's a little bit on the confusing side myself. Um, so now that we've got that, now we're going to go dot nav links ul. Here's the unordered list. So we have the container menu links. And now we have, I'm sorry, not nav links, menu links, UL. This is going to be the unordered list characteristics. Opening bracket, closing bracket. And now within that, we're going to just say margin auto. Now when we look at it, it'll just, it's perfectly centered now and it'll stay centered because the margin is auto. And we're going to add one more, and it's going to say dot menu links. Now we're outside. This is another individual item here, okay? Curly brace. Curly brace. And in here, we're going to have the UL or the, um, the LIs, menu links, LI. So we have the container. We have the unordered list, and then each individual item, li, list item, is going to fall. This is going to be the characteristics of those list items, your home, contact, samples, etc. So now we're going to say padding. 
And let's just for now, let's give it a two pixels by two pixels by two pixels all the way. I guess if we're gonna, you can just say one and it'll go all the way around. Whenever you have your coordinates in a window, all right, and this is going to have to be the probably close to the end of this lesson. Your padding is inside a window. Let's save this and go into the HTML. Padding is inside. Okay, so if you were to have something in this header, I'm just going to say this because it's it's bigger. I'm going to use the header. Padding is from the inside. So if you had 10 pixels padding in the header. It would move everything. It would move this header word 10 pixels away from the wall. So padding is inside the container. Margin is outside. See when these blue sides come up for we click in the body, these blue things are outside. That's a margin. If it were padding, this blue thing would be inside. So padding pushes words in and margin pushes things out. And it pushes it the opposite way. So a left margin is going to push your item to the right. Make sense? Well, that's what's going to happen in this, this links thing. We're going to have our home samples in about. And they're going to have padding, which is going to push them two pixels apart from the inside of their little buttons. This is going to be so much easier to understand when you see it. So with that, I actually think I'm going to leave you hanging and we'll pick it up in lesson number five and finish these little buttons. If you go to baddragonproductions.com. You can watch the whole video without any breaks and we'll see you then. Thanks a lot.